Hello, my name is Mike Hüdig. I'm a PhD student at the University of Düsseldorf and today I'm going to tell you about plant mutants as a tool to find gene functions. Here on the cover slide you see actually two nice plants that you discovered in the field several times and you have one of them is a wild type, the three-leafed clover, and one of them is a plant mutant actually, the four-leafed clover. And when you're going to find mutants in the field, they are actually very rare. So usually when we want to, um, when we want to work with plant mutants, we have to generate new plant mutants. Here in the top left corner, you see a chilo field from the Netherlands that looks actually very nice. There are very colorful flowers on there and the flower uh, colors are all mutants. So every, every one of them is a variation or a mutant that naturally occurred. But usually the naturally occurring mutations are pretty random and they are especially difficult to pin down to a single gene. And therefore we generate in our lab um, carefully one mutant at a time that actually hits a known gene. As you may remember from your school knowledge, DNA is the carrier of all information in the, living, uh, in the processes in the living cell. And a gene is the organizational base unit of that. So it's based in the DNA. And what we, uh, how can we discover the gene function actually? Um, a, common, uh, a common process in the plant biology is to take a gene and knock it out. And when we find uh, a knockout mutant, so-called, we can work with that. And in my lab, we are working with the mice-eared cress, or Avidopsis thaliana, as it's called in Latin. And it is a plant model for uh, our uh, mutant biology. Here you can see a wild type Avidopsis thaliana. You can find it everywhere on the street side. It is a home in Europe, in North America, Australia, Asia, you can find it basically everywhere. And we take this plant and transform it and make it a mutant. So in my lab, I work with wild type Arbidopsis thaliana and several mutants. So when I investigate wild types and mutants in my lab, I put them under specific conditions. For example, at the top, uh, at the top of the picture, you see um, a mutant a mutants and a pheno and a wild type under a condition that we call 16 hours of light and 120 micromole photons per meter per, uh, per square meter per second. That does not mean much to you, but um, that you can imagine that as a summer light, summer day in the northern hemisphere, and a afternoon light. But um, you cannot tell the mutants or the wild type apart. They all look the same. If you go through the bottom picture and add some clouds to the sky. So the light intensity goes down to 80 micromoles per square meter in second. They don't look the same. The mutants are, for example, the mutant in the middle, looks very, looks very small and doing poorly. But um, the other mutant on the left hand side is actually doing quite well, almost as well as the wild tap. And so a phenotype can inform you about what a gene actually does. Here I present you a mutant phenotype that is actually more uh, visible than just the plant being smaller. On the left hand side you see a wild type banana. Maybe you have never seen a wild type banana because you only know the sterile bananas from our supermarkets. They are very tasty and they are only as tasty as they are because they don't have seeds. So the wild type banana actually has very very large seeds in them and that would be not uh, so tasty and also very harsh and bitter. So actually there was a gene knockout naturally occurring in that banana and that made that tasty fruit. If you want to know more about what I do or what we do in our consortium, go to the 3 to 4 website or visit me at my lab.